Abby. And I'm Caitlin. And we just read something really sad on the news. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're distraught. But today's mini-sode is another installment of Goodreads Bad Reviews. We are looking at the Kingdom of the Wicked series by Carrie Maniscalco. Wow, I am just, my heart's not in this right now. <laughs> anyway, as always, we like to look at the general rating of the books. And then I only like to read one-star reviews, personally. Yeah, poisonally. Poisonally. Um. <laughs> You know, people didn't like these. No. And I was a little shocked. The first and third book are pretty lowly rated in general. Yeah. Uh, so Kingdom of the Wicked only got a 3.92 out of 5. Like, that's, that's bad. Okay. That's okay, but disagree. We're going to start with the first book. This one's really long. I do not want to read the whole thing. But I feel like they had some valid criticisms here. So I'm going to hit the highlights. So... This person said that there basically there were other books by Carrie that they did really enjoy. So they saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of disappointed. To start, my enjoyment of this novel is overall very small. My favorite part actually was the descriptions of food. Ha! Didn't expect that, did you? Yes, the food description <laughs> descriptions left my mouth watering and were so visceral that I needed to go eat immediately, or else my stomach wouldn't stop growling until the next century. <laughs> That's a good thing for a book. That's fair. Um, That's they, funny. She did say that kind of the Princess of Hell just fell flat and that Carrie's version of the princess didn't line up with the actual lore, um, which is fair. I mean, they're not, they're a little more loyal and loving, I guess, than you would expect yeah. Deadly Sins to be. She did say the plot seemed cookie cutter, which I disagree with the cookie cutter part. Um, yeah, and I thought it was erratic. very refreshing. It was refreshing. I do agree with the, the sporadic nature, though. Yeah. <laughs> I just found one, and it said, Did I read this same book as everyone else? Amelia is too dumb to survive this book or anywhere. She's dumb as a doornail. No, you're right. No, you're, you're right. not we right. We read the same book. We just chose to ignore it. <laughs> this person says, Oh, no. <laughs> First of all, I'm from Sicily, born and raised, and I find this book highly Ooh. offensive. Why? Because the mere thought of Americans always feeling the right of writing about a culture they clearly know nothing about really makes me sick. Oh, boy. This is ouchie. This is not good. Um, first of all, I've never known anyone from my hometown in the rest of Italy named Victoria. Well, and it's, it's Victoria. And I live in a place where proud moms and dads call their children Michael and Jessica. To feel cool. I'm not sure what your point is there. Who are these people? <laughs> um, okay. I'm a little confused about what you're saying there, but that's okay. <laughs> what probably annoys me the most is the author didn't bother to learn about the geographical position of Sicily. Well, first of all, it's hell. So. <laughs> most important, why the hell people in Sicily swell in Neapolitan dialect? Again, does the author think Southern Italy is all made of the same stereotypical people and language? No, well, it's hell. But it's hell and it's not actually Sicily. But you wouldn't know that in the first book. So that's actually fair. This one says 10 reasons why you should bring Kingdom of the Wicked. And then it says thanks for reading. <laughs> Get <laughs> roasted. What even was this book? This book was mediocre at best. I just want a book about Wrath and his brothers. No Amelia necessary. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people were pretty upset about the Italian representation. This one says, if you were Italian, you would understand why this book is completely trash. Why did Carrie Menescalco decide to set the story in 1800 if she didn't even study the historical and social situation in Sicily of the time? I'm shocked. Hmm. Okay. I, too, do not know the social situation of yeah. Italy in 1800. That feels like valid criticism. It sounds um, like maybe it was not good. But again, I will say that, like, she's not claiming this is actually Sicily, like, in 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 the entire series. I do get how this is coming across that way in the first book, though, because Amelia does think she lives in Sicily. Um, this person says, the only good thing in Kingdom of the Wicked is the descriptions of food, but I can get that and probably a better story from an Olive Garden menu. 
The story follows a really boring protagonist named Amelia who turns Scooby-Doo after her twin sister is murdered. <laughs> Unfortunately, Amelia is not very bright and can't piece together glaringly obvious clues to who the hell the murderer is. Well, joke's on you, Bestie. Neither did you because <laughs> Victoria so... murdered herself. Wrath is a hot guy with a tattoo, and that's about the extent of depth that his character has. He's inexplic- inexplicably interested in Amelia. Maybe they bonded over their lack of personalities. I don't know. Again, there's more information to be gleaned from the other book. If you had read them. (laughs) Which is fair. I mean, the first book, (laughs) that's fair. That's your impression. The biggest flaw this book has is that the wrong sister died. (laughs) Damn. Victoria has a fiery personality and Amelia sucks, basically. Which, yeah. Yeah. Again, first book, I see it. I see it. This person said, I don't think even 14-year-old me would have liked this. Damn, really? 14-year-old me would have read anything. I would have loved this. I would have ate this shit up. This person said, one star bag of shit. All right. (laughs) This one just says no, period. (laughs) It was really slow and kind of boring, and there was a lot of demon stuff in it. There is a lot of demon (laughs) stuff in it. You're not wrong, bestie. You're not (laughs) wrong. So much demon stuff in it. That's why I like it. It was very demonic in nature. <laughs> this person said, liking this series and shipping Wrath and Amelia. Red flag, red flag, red flag, like times 10. I will agree. Like the first book, you shouldn't have really been shipping them. No, it was very widely inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So book two actually got slightly better ratings. Four point um, seven out of five. Yeah. Nothing to shake your fist, Diana. I want to kick us off with my favorite that I <laughs> that I've seen all day. This says something should stay on Wattpad. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? <laughs> this says no, baby girl, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of y'all are giving this book way too much credit. LMAO. Amelia is a clueless brat, and Raph, a quote unquote feminist alpha. Also, nothing fucking happens, TF. Not even the smut is making up for it. It is even second book syndrome at this point. It's a fully fleshed out mutation and deadly disease. Oh, and it was giving Akatar. I wasn't getting Akatar from this series. Giving at all. I mean, do you mean because there's a tall, dark, and handsome? This one says Cornicello too. Cornicello. Yeah. Why did it become so horny? Possibly the worst book I've ever read. So not a lot of people were down for the smut. and They didn't again, like it. We talked about this before, though. Like, it is marketed as YA. Yeah. I'm and sorry, so- but smut does not make up for the lack of intrigue. That's fair. All right. Not a lot happened in the second book. We even admitted that. This one says, Wrath is no longer my baby girl with a sad face. Aww. This is one star, but it says all stars go to wrath. If I'd wanted an Akamoff fiction, fan fiction, I would have reread Akamoff. Listen, what is up with that? At least the United States of Italy didn't make an appearance. What is that? Is that, is that, oh, is that like American, like Americans writing Italy? Oh, uh, maybe. Like the, that's their cheeky way of saying it. Which again, like. It's quite cheeky. I don't, I get it. Like, I don't know I anything know. about Italy, so. Okay, like, 12 of these have been comparing it to A Court of Mist and Fury. I don't... I disagree. I don't understand that comparison other than they're saying Raph and Reese are similar, which I can understand, yes, the similarities there. Um, But other than that, the story is a lot different. How could a book have nothing happen for 35 chapters? It was no plot, no thought, just horny vibes. No plot, no thought, just horny vibes. I want that on a t-shirt. No plot, no thought, just Just horny horny vibes. vibes. Oh my god, let's make that. I love that. Yeah, write that down. I'll make one right now. Creds to whoever wrote that review. (laughs) One star. Amelia, girl. Yeah. (laughs) This one one is running in circles. I was just thinking (laughs) it. (laughs) So if you guys didn't understand that, because we both got excited running in circles makes me dizzy is what it said i finished it because my brain told me to (laughs) hell is so boring it got me praying just to avoid it damn god blessed me with eyeballs and i abused them 
No, actually, this did piss me off when I was reading it. So this is so valid. This is a direct quote. It says, drying blood or an aged Merlot reduced in a saucepan and drizzled over a cut of peppercorn encrusted meat was a way to describe the color of her dress. That, that was disgusting. I hated that a lot, and I kind of forgot about it. No, that's a, that's a valid one. Was it enough to give it a one-star review? No. They had more to say. Okay. That's how they kicked it off. These are all so long. They're passionate. Yeah, oh my god. I don't care about anything this much. Honestly, you guys are more worked up than me on my course evaluations. Feyre and Resand 2.0. It wasn't. I don't see it. I d- I'm sorry. And like, maybe. I'm sorry. Was Farah a super sleuth? <laughs> was Farah a super sleuth? And was she like. A did she go body? to hell? Like, did- Well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> yeah, true. Gratuitously drawn out sexual tension scenes and not enough story plot development. I'm into the magic and underworld setting, but this book is heavy on the relationship drama, which is not my cup of tea. Okay, well, that's a, yeah, that is a major portion of this book. Okay, on to the next. So the Theme of the Fear got the lowest of all. Yeah, the lowest, a 3.90 out of 5. But I do got that Goodreads Choice Award. You know, the Um, one stars only make up about 2%, so. Yeah, and they are harsh. Um, Giving one star isn't enough. I need Carrie Maniscalco to stop writing. That's hurtful. My favorite part was when it ended. (laughs) know what everyone has against wattpad novels i know oh one star i just strongly despise smut so another that it's like okay if you hadn't marketed as ya you could have it's true it's true if this is what hell is like i gotta start repenting for my sins why it seemed kind of fun uh you know i'm able to look past a lot of things but the knuckle tats really were where i had to draw the line (laughs) Mm, okay that was it that was the line one star only for sloth you know what i'm gonna like that no that's so accurate (laughs) i loved sloth yeah yes you'll destroy all your enemies without mercy and you're horny i get it (laughs) i get it most people only made it about 20 percent of the book This person said, glad that's over. Literally nothing happened. And then everything. WTF was that plot twist. It wasn't even a twist. It just changed the whole story. Peace out. I hate these bastards. That I feel like is also a valid criticism. I could never be an author because I would cry every time someone wrote that review. (laughs) It would hurt my feelings. Wouldn't be able to read it. Is this supposed to be YA or erotica? That seems like a bit of a stretch. Well, but again, it's that YA marketing. She needs to not do that. I mean, unless you're going to write YA. Someone said this book put me back into a slump. (laughs) Oh, no. That's really sad. I read the sex scene and then stopped reading. (laughs) There. Zero out of five? Is that a thing? Again, the only wicked thing about this whole series is how long it took me to push through. (laughs) That's a good one. This person says, I have PTSD from reading the phrase, honeyed warmth pooling in my belly repeatedly. (laughs) You know what I actually despised about this book is every time Amelia would go, blood and bones. Blood and bones. And it's worse if it's the audio book. shut up. Uh, or goddess curse me <laughs> i hated that i actually really hated that too <laughs> like i did start counting how many Blood times she bones. said it we should Blood start bones. It unironically oh it made me cringe i want a lobotomy after reading this book <laughs> <laughs> one star only for pride and lucia and domenico understood Domenico loved uh, oh my god boo hiss <laughs> <laughs> this one just says this book is weird <laughs> i love you guys you're so funny book is doesn't open what wait i oh. am become blade <laughs> i have become blade 
I hate the resandification of love interests. Not the resandification. <laughs> I'm like tall, dark, and handsome didn't exist before resand. Oh, okay. This is also valid. I felt like there were too many plot holes and conveniences. That's yeah, something that we are I agree. A- in agreement with. But I still really liked it. <laughs> the only climax in the book was during the smut. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia isn't the girl boss she thinks she is. This person's mad about the spelling of Cersei. I saw that. I was like, get over it. Okay, Kinsley. Yeah, right. Yeah, I so the like, ones that just say boo. <laughs> I know. All in all, the crowd was not pleased. <laughs> but I will say that was like one or two percent of the reviews. Yeah, everyone 2%. else loved it. Everyone else did like it a lot more. But most of these criticisms that were genuine criticisms, we do agree with. It just Everything it wasn't enough to give it a liked. one star. Yeah, like, the things that I liked definitely outweighed the things that I didn't. And that's okay to disagree. But this will officially wrap up all things Kingdom of the Wicked. Join us next week. We're going to be diving into the Hunger Games. We're super, super excited. We're so uh, excited to revisit this series. It was such a staple of our childhood. Mm-hmm. And now with the prequel being turned into a movie like it's just super relevant again and it looks so excited. good the week after we are going to do a mini sode and kind of discuss the influence that the hunger game series had on mainstream media during that time period and how it kind of became a trend for dystopian ya i think it's really interesting how many books showed up after the hunger Games series yeah. found success so we're going to talk about that So go ahead, get started on the first Hunger Games book. We'll talk to you next time. And as always, let's get lit. Bye.